الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم وقال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على حبيبك ونبيك سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد living at a time where there is a large number of people who are even questioning the existence of a creator for this universe. Questioning the existence of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when it comes to talking about trusting Allah, having our faith, our iman, our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes a very, very strange topic for them. That what does this mean? Because people are so used to keeping everything, on the, looking at everything from the worldly point of view. If I have money, I will be able to buy bread and then only I would be able to survive. In other words, if I don't have money, I can never survive. Survival is based on my money, my job and my work. My boss is the one who is allowing me to survive. When this becomes the belief system of the people, then of course, this world will mean everything for them. Then this dunya is everything. Because we depend on this dunya. And this is the difference between a mu'min and a kafir. A mu'min realizes that I totally depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My survival is on in the control of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. My health, my living, my well-being, anything that I have, it's all controlled not by these worldly means, it's controlled by my Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Iman that Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam came to teach people. And this is what we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam training the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een to believe and understand and live in accordance to this. A Sahabiyah doing hijrah from Mecca Mukarrama to Medina Munawwara her name is Um Sharik. Some of the kuffar found out that she is immigrating from Mecca to Medina. They went and they captured her. 
and they deprived her from food, from drink, from everything. Three days, she has nothing to eat, nothing to drink. And the third day, they went to her, approached her, and they said to her, the only way, the only way we can release you is that you disown Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you come back to the faith and the belief that you were practicing before. Come back to worshipping the idols. And just as we hear about Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, Ahadun Ahad, Ahadun Ahad, there is only one God. Um Sharik radiallahu anha said the same thing. She said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. This is something I can never give up and never, never denounce. I'm ready to give up my life, but I will not give up La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. It's Iman, it's the trust. Is it that, okay, Allah will feed me? It's not that. Even if I die, I don't care if I die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the true Iman. It's not, see, mostly when we say Iman and trust, we say it simply means, or oh, you will get food from somehow. Or somehow, the food will stop dripping from the ceiling. Or you will open the closet and you will find gold. It's not, that is not called trust. Trust is, Ya Allah, whatever you decide, I accept it and I, I'm going with it. I'm ready for whatever you would decide for me. I will not decide for myself, Ya Allah. I will let you decide for me, Ya Rabb. Next morning, they came and they found her sitting very healthy and strong. Three days of starvation, hunger, thirst, thirst. And this is in that heat of Makkah and Medina. She is halfway between Makkah and Medina. And they also saw some, uh, the ground was little wet with water. They said, must be, there has to be someone who came last night in the middle of the night, gave her the water and ran away. Where do you get your food from? I have no idea. As I was sleeping, and I saw a drum coming down. I opened it. It was full of water. There was some food with it. I ate. I drank. And the remaining part of that drum, there is a portion of it that is left over here too. She showed it to them. That food that was in that drum that she received, it remained with her for the rest of her life until she passed away. It used to be called Ukkatu Umma Sharik. People used to go and get some little morsel from there as a baraka. Full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Survival is not in the hands of kuffar. It's not in the hands of these people who have captured me. Survival is in the hands of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was her Iman. We know the difficulty and hardship Sahaba Ridwanullah went through during the battle of Uhud. Where they lost, lost 70 great Sahaba. Hamza radiallahu anhu, Musa ibn Umair, Anas ibn Nadr, and many more. The next day, and then the ones that were still surviving, they had deep injuries. This was during the battle of Uhud. Most of the Sahaba in the battle of Uhud, Uhud so, uh, they, uh, they had deep injuries. Next day, as Kuffar were leaving and they were halfway, they were going on their way to Makkah Mukarramah, they started discussing why did we stop before we would capture anyone, we take anyone as captives, no spoils of war, we didn't take none of the peace and uh, no land from them, we didn't go to their city and attack them, 
So why did we leave? Now, as this discussion comes up, everyone's thinking, yeah, I don't know what. Oh, because I saw you, because they started pointing fingers at each other. Which is the normal situation. When you lose, when you miss something, then you always blame it on others. If something is good, oh, because I did this. So, now the decision was, let's go back and attack the Muslims in Medina Munawwara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got this news that this is what they have been deciding. This is what they have been discussing and they have decided they want to come back and attack us in Medina Munawwara. And right there he called that I want everyone that was with me in the battle of Uhud, he doesn't want their munafiqeen to join. How many Sahaba were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the 350 munafiqeen left out of 1,650? Out of those 70 are gone. Now, less than 600 Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een. And we have 1,000 warriors on the other side and others are coming and joining them. And all of these, most of these Sahaba have deep injuries. Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called them. He said, everyone that was with me yesterday in the battle of Ahad, I would like them to join me and we will follow the kuffar to the point where they are right now. We will not allow them to come and attack us in Medina. We will go and confront them where they are right now. What would be the reaction of those who suffered these injuries and lost 70 of their people yesterday? And today they find themselves in a position where they really need rest now. We don't have any ways of treating our wounds. Some of them, they have lost their eyes. Some have, their hand has been cut off. Others are bleeding from different portions, parts of the body. How could we go? But not a single one that raised any question. They all got ready right away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admires them in Quran. الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَصَابَهُمُ الْقَرْحِ those who obeyed Allah and His Messenger after being deeply wounded. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا مِنْهُمْ وَاتَّقَوْا أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Out of them who would continue living the life of taqwa and doing good, they will have a great reward with Allah. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا These are the people when people told them that these enemies have gathered to attack all of you. They have gathered their forces to attack you. You should fear them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witnessing of the status of their heart and their mind. In Quran, Allah tells us, This increased their iman and their faith and their trust in Allah. They said, Allah is enough for us. He is the one that he is the best supporter. We are not going to be scared of these people. This is Iman. These are examples of Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us in Quran. In the fifth year of the Hijrah, 10,000 warriors got together from all around Arabia. And they came up with that decision that according to them was the final, final decision. Subhanallah, think about it. This is the final decision they have made now after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa being for 13 years in Makkah Mukarramah. And you know, after 13 years, they made that decision also. There was a day when Quraysh, this is not all of Arabia, this is just Quraysh, came up with that decision that we are going to assassinate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that said we can't take this anymore. After 13 years. You know, they tortured Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Sahaba in every way possible. After 13 years, they said, now is enough is enough. And now we are going to assassinate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. We can't take him no more. And that was the day 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do the hijrah, to migrate from Mecca to Medina. And we know that their plan of that day became a reason for Islam to spread all around the world. Hijrah, the greatest event in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or one of them. And after the hijrah, we see the spread of Islam. What was the situation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time of the hijrah? إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِي يَثْنَيْنِ The whole Quraysh is in search of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr. And it's only two of them. It's only two people. Can you imagine? Two people versus the whole country. And Allah tells us, إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ If no one is willing to help him, I, Allah, have already helped him the day when there were only two of them. I helped them even on that day. The point is, Kuffar, Quraysh, made that decision that day, enough is enough, we are going to just kill him. And we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him. Now is the time the whole Arabia gets together and they came with this final decision. We are going to just wipe away Islam and Muslims from the surface of the earth. Read the seerah. Read the seerah. See what was the decision of that day. We will wipe away Islam and Muslims from the surface of the earth. That's it. After this battle, there won't be a single person in the world that will know La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. That was the decision. And for that, they gathered an army of 10,000 warriors versus how many? 1,400 people. Only 1,400. 1,400. And 10,000 over there. And these 1,400, they are not all warriors. You are including young people, children. You are including people who are not of that field. And here 10,000 are only warriors. Army of 10,000. That's going to attack the civilians over there. And they arrived at Medina Munawwara. As I said, according to their planning, these are the last days of Islam and Muslims in the world. That's it. We are going to wipe away Islam and Muslims. There will be no one to say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abdu wa rasooluh. And we know the result. Subhanallah, today, what is the creed of any other religion? You don't know. But every person knows the creed of Islam is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Illa tansuruhu faqad nasarahu Allah. If you are not willing to help him, Allah says, I already helped him. When Medina was surrounded by those 10,000 warriors, the whole Medina is surrounded. You know where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not history now. They're not just seerah. This is not any other book. This is Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ They came from above. They came from underneath. It's a, uh, it's a flood of people that are flooding Medina. And they're coming from all sides. They surrounded Medina from every side. مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ Quran is telling us. They came from above. They came from underneath. They surrounded you from every side. Wherever you would go and see, you see armies and armies and armies of people. What happened to Sahaba when they saw this? Your eyes started flipping. Quran is telling us, your eyes flipped by seeing that huge army surrounding you from every side. You look at yourself. You look at what you have. You look at your family. You look at your wife, your daughter, your children in the house. We can't do nothing. 
For sure tomorrow these people are going to enter Medina and just take over everything. Your eyes flipped. وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرِ Out of fear, your hearts got to your throat. That was the state of fear in Medina at that time. And there were people with weakness in their faith and their iman. Allah says about them, وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ You started having all kinds of thoughts about Allah, suspicions. I don't know. Allah says He promised that He's going to help. Prophet ﷺ told us Allah's help will come. Nothing is coming. And how is it going to happen now? That's right. They have already surrounded us from all sides. And every, all of those thoughts are coming to their minds. Why Allah? Well, Ayaz Billah, well, Ayaz Billah, as a lot of people would question, why Allah is not helping? Why don't we see Allah's help? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the hikmah behind it, هُنَالِكَ بْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ At that time, the people of Iman were tested. It was the test for the people of Iman. وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا And they were shaken up very strongly. Who's saying this? Allah. When Allah says, زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا You know what would that mean? I shook them up really hard to test their iman. And munafiqeen came out now. Today is their day. Munafiqeen came out. وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Munafiqeen, people with disease in their heart, they started saying, all of these promises from our Prophet وسلم, Allah's Nusra, Allah's help, it was only a delusion, it was only just promises that mean nothing. And a group of Munafiqeen started saying to the people of Iman that you people now have no place to go in the world. You people have no place to go. It's end. It's your end now. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathers the Sahaba. Let's make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of true iman are the ones who made dua at that time. Who never lost their trust in Allah. And they all gathered with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's dua was, Allahumma munzil al-kitab. Oh Allah! Who have revealed this book, Sari al Hisab, who is very swift at reckoning, Ahzim al Hisab, defeat all of these forces. Allahumma Ahzimhum wa Zalzilhum. Ya Allah, defeat them and shake them up. Until now, we have been shaken up. But Ya Allah, shake them up. They stayed there 14 days. And after that, a strong wind started blowing up. That was blowing up everything that they had. Their tents blew away. Now their camels are running away. And right there, the leaders started calling, let's go, I'm going, let's go. They packed up and they all left. That was the last time that Kuffar were ever able to scare Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in, the people of Iman. After that, Allah tested them. They passed the test. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the situation for the Ummah of Islam at that time. A lot more that Quran tells us about it. These are beautiful lessons that we need to learn from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the seer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the lives of Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam that is mentioned in Quran. That will tell us the situation, the present situation of the Ummah today. It's all about returning to Allah. It's, this is all what it matters. It's all about returning to Allah. Coming back to Allah. Not running away from Allah. Keeping our trust in Allah. Having full trust in Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala in his Nusrah. Full trust in everything that Prophet ﷺ told us. That sins bring destruction. Iman and taqwa 
will bring peace and tranquility. Dua and dhikr will bring the nusra and the help of Allah. And all of those other distractions will only bring destruction to our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the true understanding and true iman. And that we stand strong in these situations where our heart gets even strongly, more strongly connected to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala and his promises. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا We become of those whose iman increases in this situation. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ خَيْرِ خَلْقِهِ سَيِّدْنَا وَنَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ آمِينَ يَا رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ